On the 5th of May 2019, I opened up to the Red Ball community about my use of a double jumping macro in my formerly world record speedruns of Red Ball 4 Volumes 1 and 2 from April 2016. The macro was used to perform an in-game glitch throughout the speedrun to reach much greater speeds and skip many of the puzzles. As use of this macro gave me an unfair advantage over the other speedrunners, and was only made possible outside of the confines of the game, my runs were invalid and hence I deleted them. More recently, on the 18th of May 2020, I confessed to the monkey ball community about a number of my high scores from 2015 which used pause buffering to give myself a competitive advantage during my attempts, a technique which has been banned outright from individual level competition since its discovery in 2002. In this video I want to go into detail about these past speedruns and high scores which were illegitimately achieved discussing my motives for cheating, how I went about doing so, and possible ways I could have been caught. I will also reveal the final illicit speedrun which I have yet to come clean about. This video is not a tutorial on how to cheat. I was never caught or called out by anyone for any of my fake times or scores. It was entirely my prerogative to expose them myself. The goal of this video is to hopefully encourage other people who have been in my situation having achieved times or scores through foul play and never been caught, to come forward and be honest with the community they are a part of. I would also like to take this as an opportunity to apologise publicly to the communities which have been affected by my own foul play in the past. While pausing remains a somewhat controversial talking point in the monkey ball community regarding real time speedruns, the decision to ban it from ILs was made almost immediately after its discovery and has never seriously been disputed to the best of my knowledge. The most likely way a player would make use of pausing to give themselves an advantage when attempting an IL is referred to as rapid pausing and involves repeatedly pausing the game whilst completing the floor, extending the player's reaction time and providing a larger window to change your inputs. Just to be totally clear, pausing to gain an advantage is allowed only for RTAs and nothing else. To put it simply, pausing is fair play for any run that uses the time from live split and foul play for anything that uses the in-game variables. The reason that pausing is a feasible way to cheat an IL is due to the widely accepted proof standard being a video of the in-game replay rather than a live recording of the attempt. Any pausing during an IL cannot be seen after saving the run as a replay and is the reason a small number of players have submitted pause abused scores and had video evidence to back up their claims. About a year ago, I had a conversation with Scott Kessler, a Super Monkey Ball player in the early 2000s, and he shared with me some information from the time rapid pausing was first discovered. Rapid pausing was banned for IELs as soon as it was officially discovered in mid-2002. Farrah Druid was the first known player to use it, and it was he who revealed it. For months, I was the only player that could do the 0.1 path on E9, and I did not pause. Then, out of the blue, Ferret Druid beat my E9 score multiple times. He shared his replay, which some people noticed was strangely jerky. Not long after, Ferret voluntarily revealed that he had paused the game rapidly, and it was decided that the technique would be banned. The ban was not heavily enforced though, and it was mostly an honor system. I personally don't think that any of the top players from my era used pausing for IL submissions, but you never know. I never submitted a score for E9 that used pausing. I remember trying it out when it was first discovered and was sickened by how easy it made the level after all the time I had put into my 18,020 score. When Super Monkey Ball charts were created on Cyberscore, it was made clear that pausing to gain an advantage during your attempts was forbidden, and this rule was more strictly enforced than before. Despite that, the community has still caught out pause abusers on multiple occasions, only through picking up on unnatural looking movement when analysing the replay. The high scores which I cheated were all set between the 26th of May and the 30th of August 2015. These were my high scores on Beginner 2, Beginner Extra 1, Advanced 15, Advanced Extra 1, Expert 14, 17, 33 and 44, Expert Extra 9 and Master 8, all of which beat or tied the world record at the time. So, a little bit of backstory. 
In 2005, a user by the name of Ice Penguin put together a compilation video of the high score record for each Super Monkey Ball floor. Although the compilation excluded a few records, as the video quality of them was complete arse, it's a great piece of Monkey Ball history, and showcases what players were capable of while the game was still in its infancy. Ten years on, Jekyll revealed to the community his plans to remake the world record compilation and display the various improvements that had been made over the past decade, as well as which records had impressively held up over such a long time period. At this point, I was still pretty new to the community. I had only ever achieved one record in the game, a score of 5110 on Expert Extra 7, which was swiftly beaten by Jekyll the very same day. After hearing of the plans to make a new world record compilation, myself and many others were motivated to start grinding ILs to try and get our replays into the video. I started out doing ILs on some master stages, as none of these have any bananas, so for a high score I only needed to focus on beating the floor as fast as I could. After a few hours spread over a few days, I managed to beat the Master 10 record by just one frame on the 25th of May. This is a legitimate record, but it was only the next day when I became involved in some nefarious activities. I was happy that I managed to get a new record, but I feared that it may have the same short-lived fate that my Expert Extra 7 score did the previous year. Grinding out Master 10 to break a 12-year-old untied world record required effort and actual skill, and gave me a genuine sense of achievement. Why would I ever want to put myself through that hell again? But I was greedy for more records. I was fully aware of the possibility of rapid pausing, but that would still require some effort and wouldn't guarantee me beating the high score. On top of that, there's always the chance the movement would look unnatural and someone would call me out on it. So I came up with a plan. I could simply boot up Dolphin, use task tools to find a series of inputs and pause frames which beat the floor with a world record score, execute the pause strategy on console and save the replay then be rewarded with a false sense of achievement that would eventually turn into a feeling of guilt years after the fact. It was perfect. I first put this theory into practice on the 26th, and submitted my first cheated record that same day. This is the method that was used for all of my cheated records, and the replays would be far more difficult for people to detect as pause abused, as choosing to pause buffer over rapid pause made for smooth looking replays. The only ways the replays could have been detected as cheated is either if someone managed to find the exact same set of frames and inputs I had used and facsimiled the replay, or compared my replays for beginner extra one, advanced extra one, and expert extra one, and seen each of them had the exact same movement at the beginning. The latter would only prove those three scores specifically to have been cheated, and both of these were very unlikely to ever happen. I should also mention that in 2014, I definitely submitted rapid pause times and scores. If you watch my old stunt montages, it's clear to see that a number of replays were rapid pause, and some of these I put on CyberScore. I can't conclusively determine exactly which replays are legit and which aren't, so I asked CyberScore mods to terminate all of my Super Monkey Ball submissions from 2014. My times of 4 minutes 30 seconds and 6 minutes 57 seconds in Red Bull 4 volumes 1 and 2 respectively are my two speedruns which were invalid due to the use of a macro to perform a trick in the game. Red Bull 4 contains a double jump glitch that is used frequently throughout the speedruns to make many of the skips possible. The double jump is executed by pressing the jump key twice in rapid succession with a very specific timing and is a difficult trick that speedrunners really need to get down to compete for the best times. When I decided to run these games in 2016, learning to double jump was something I was too lazy to do, especially considering these were flash games with maybe only 4 or 5 runs at the time. To save myself the effort, I downloaded a program called Keybinder and created a command to repeatedly press the up arrow at a set interval so long as I held the down arrow. Although the macro wasn't 100% effective at achieving double jumps, it was certainly better at it than I was, and enabled me to beat the world record in both games. 
Three years later, the Red Bull community had grown significantly, and despite both my times having been beaten by others, my speedrun of Volume 1 had started getting some traction on YouTube, and I was regularly receiving comments from people who thought that I was cheating by double jumping at all, so I decided to create a double jump tutorial to dispel these egregious accusations. A few months following the release of my tutorial, I received a message from Calumbull, who was aware that I had used a macro for the run. He queried why I decided not to mention it in the tutorial, saying it was pretty shady that I'd never brought it up anywhere publicly. Looking back, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Obviously this is cheating, you idiot. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I didn't know exactly what I was doing. Anyway, having read Callum's messages, I realised it was only fair to let the others know what I'd got up to in that run, and to the surprise of no one, the runs were invalid and I had them removed. Cheater eradicated. To my knowledge, there's no way people would have been able to tell this run used a macro just by watching the video. Before I move on, I wanted to mention I also used Keybinder to bind jump to the mouse wheel when I did speedruns of Trespasser. This didn't really give me an advantage of any kind, but Fenno, if you're watching this, even though I've mentioned this to you before, I'll let you be the judge of whether this invalidates my runs or not. Alright. Now it's time to uncover the hottest scoopage of the video and reveal my final cheated world record. Red Bull community, I am so, so sorry. On the 25th of April 2015, I uploaded a speedrun of the original Red Bull, claiming a time of 3 minutes and 56 seconds. I hate to say it, but this run is spliced. I had already been speedrunning Red Ball on and off for a while by 2015, but in April I'd been putting in some hard graft trying to become the Roger Bannister of Red Ball and achieve the first sub 4 minute time. After hundreds of attempts, I finally had a run that was looking good going into the final level. Here, I was using a new and very inconsistent strategy discovered by Oblivion RR, that involved a precise jump, clipping the corner of a box and sending Red Ball to a high part of the level, allowing you to skip past the puzzle below. Unfortunately in the run, I cocked up the strategy a couple of times and ended up finishing just shy of 4 minutes. Expectedly, I was livid, but unlike a normal thinking person, instead of taking a break and returning to attempts at a later date, I decided to edit the failed attempts at the box clip out of the run and take my time below 4 minutes. While I was at it, I also trimmed down the run at checkpoints to make it look as though my intentional resets were more quickly performed than they were in reality. The edited run clocked in at 3.56 and this is what I uploaded and submitted to speedrun.com. With the rules that were in place at the time, splicing a run and getting away with it wouldn't have been hard. In the run I play with the game sound muted, which should have been an immediate red flag, but it wasn't uncommon for speedrunners to do this given the extremely irritating music that plays constantly in the game. As the years went by and my feeling of guilt grew more and more, I made a forum post on the 12th of March 2018 stating that a new rule would soon be enforced, requiring all runs faster than 4 minutes 30 to have game audio enabled, and all existing runs which did not meet the given criteria would be invalidated retroactively. While this decision was genuinely due to raise suspicions of other players splicing runs, it was also an excuse for me to get my time off the boards without having to admit to cheating. In the long run, this proved unsuccessful. The recent creation of Red Ball category extensions and the new glitchless category nestled my fake time right back into the jockstrap of speedrun.com. Of all my cheated records, I'm most surprised nobody managed to suss out this run was spliced. The only real giveaway is the cursor. If you look closely, you can see the cursor has a blue outline when passing over wood textures. This is because between attempts on level 12, I managed to bump my mouse and nudge the cursor over the gameplay. This would have been a dead giveaway the run was spliced, as after resetting at the checkpoint, the cursor would magically appear out of thin air. To get around this, I did quite clearly a poor job of cropping out the cursor as I left behind remnants of the sky texture and overlaid it onto the game throughout the whole run. Even after doing this, there were still ways to tell the video had been tampered with. If you watch the run to the very end, the cursor instantly vanishes right at the last second. 
I no longer have the unedited recording of this run, although my two times of 4 minutes and 3 seconds which I recently got on stream were both clearly legitimate. So there you have it, my complete history of cheating in video games and being a disingenuous pillock for over half a decade. I want to apologise to the monkey ball community and the red ball community for lying about my times and scores for so many years. Don't be like I was and follow the example I set. Follow the example set by players such as Scrap and Gonquai, who have gone to the effort to provide live replays of their super monkey ball records without ever being asked and without it being a proof requirement. Or red ball players such as Motor Jam and its Maximum, who have put heaps of time and effort into optimising the games in that series. It's unfair to lead others to believe you have achieved times or scores by putting in the same amount of effort as them, when in reality it took little to no effort and zero skill. If there's anything I've learned from having cheated records, it's that cheating is a very scummy thing to do, and absolutely not worth it. It's also much better for everyone involved to come clean of your own volition rather than waiting for someone else to eventually find you out. It makes everyone's lives a lot easier. I never received any backlash from the monkey ball community and the cyberscore mods had no need to dig through my whole profile trying to pinpoint which submissions weren't legit. I gave them a list of my cheated records, the mods had them deleted and we got on with our lives. If any of you sitting and watching this video are guilty of cheating a run, no matter how old it is, or whether it's since been obsoleted, please take on board what I've said and do the right thing for Christ's sake. Rapid pausing was banned for IELTS as soon as there was a f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f